Well, alrighty, here we are today at Obsessed With, talking to another fantastic human being. And I'm joined today by Rosemary Muller, who lives all the way out west on a cattle property. And uh, she was just telling me that raising cattle is a little bit like the stock market, and it's just a little bit harder to move. Rosemary, thanks so much for stopping your day today and popping in and joining us here at Obsessed With. How are you going? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm chugging along just fine. Um, I think this is it's, it's as, as horrible as all of this is. Um, I'm, I'm to this week. I'm enjoying the space it's given me to be a little bit more creative and and talk to cool people like you. So I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you were telling me that you live on a, a cattle farm. So it's out near Billawila. Yep, that's correct. And you're a country girl at heart, so you've lived there your whole life. Yeah, that's right. I grew up in a little town called Banana. They do not grow bananas there. Um, and it's even smaller. It's got uh, a pub, a servo and a school. And um, I was there for the first 25 years of my life on a um, cattle and grain property with my parents and my um, grandparents. And then um, my dad sold the farm in 2007 and everyone kind of dispersed and did their own thing. And now I'm married and live in Billawila, which is only about half an hour away from Banana. Yeah, and on another cattle property now. Oh, I'm allergic to bananas. I wonder if I could go to Banana and not have a reaction. You'll be right, there's no bananas there. <laughs> I guess when we, you know, we're all self-isolating and social distancing you guys have got that down pat yeah that's just our normal life so nothing's really changed <laughs> yeah so what what advice would you have for us poor city folk are all going a bit mental right now because we can't go anywhere we can't do anything you know we can't party so what type of things would you suggest that we do to kind of like build a bridge and get over it yeah, well, I think we just have other interests, I suppose. We um, make things with our hands, hence the furniture. and um, We do a lot of, well, I'm sure my children watch way too much television, but they watch TV. We go around the paddock and do things like that. And there's lots of other things to keep yourselves occupied, apart from going out, I suppose. We, um, I read a lot, a lot. Um, my husband hates books. He reckons they're good... Um, Good for the fire only, but um, yeah, we don't <laughs> we we don't really do too much interesting things. But um, yeah, just basically work on our businesses and look after our babies is all we can do at the moment. That like sounds all very interesting. What's your favourite book? What's the favourite book that you've read? Um, well, that's a hard question. Uh, I liked the uh, Jen Sinchiro books, the badass books. They're pretty awesome. I'm reading the E Myth Revisited by Michael, I guess Gerber or Gerber, I can't pronounce his last name. Um, but I'm enjoying that one at the moment too, about working on your business as opposed to working in your business and getting into that point where um, yeah, you're more of like the, the CEO type thing instead of the technician. Um, my favourite book of all time. I I enjoyed um Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. That was a good one too. Wow. Of, it's an old yeah. goodie, isn't it? It is an old one, yeah. And it was one of the first um, personal development books I ever read, which was um, a long time ago. But it still reminds me every day of well, things that I read in that. And, you know, it's not all about us. So, <laughs> Well, yeah. it's true, isn't it? it but it's, it's kind of hard to think it's not all about us when all we have is four walls at the moment and it's like they're getting smaller. There's some really cool <laughs> there. Um, I, I too love reading. I have I have a Kindle, and I call it my best friend. And it's just okay. finish one book, and then I can go and buy the next one straight away. And it's like this is just like having a library in my hand. I love it. Um, it's awesome. You can't burn a Kindle, so hubby's out. No, all. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I love real books. I'm a big fan of holding the books, you know, the way they smell, feeling them, the whole sitting down with something in your hand that 
can flip through and yeah. Oh, anyway, that's me. No, no, actually there's two very, two very distinct camps when it comes to reading and um, I used to be a huge book lover in terms of the, the physical book uh, and then because I'd moved so many times packing and repacking books became a bit of a pain in the backside and I'm allergic to dust. So they'd gather dust, I'd be reading and going, achoo, achoo, achoo. <laughs> that kind of interrupts your train of thought, doesn't it? And your page gets a bit wet and messy. And <laughs> everybody, that, you know, trying to stop germs. Um, but when I got the Kindle, it was like, yeah, I, I became a convert. I definitely converted over yeah. to I very rarely, unless someone gives me a book, very rarely do that. Now, you said something very interesting there you said you've got a couple of businesses so i take the cattle business as one but you're talking about mm. made furniture yeah yeah so i um i operate the, the furniture business um it kind of started as a bit of a um a way to escape um being i don't know dragged down by just all the kids stuff that was going on i just had my third child third daughter and I needed to do something for myself. So um, I've, I've always loved working in the shed with my dad when I was little and being around the tools and just the smell of grease. But um, I, I started making tiny like little trays and, and like iPad stamps and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed it. And um, we built our house about two years ago and we wanted to buy this beautiful furniture that was you know, solid wood, Australian made. And we went to the shop, so we were sorely disappointed. <laughs> so we had a look online and I had to go at a few pieces myself and I absolutely loved it. And so I just started making it for friends and family and now I do it all the time. Wow. That's what I came about. You, yourself? Yeah, I do it. My husband does not have the patience for woodwork. He hates it. <laughs> wow. Like, is it something that you did before as a hobby or...? It's just something um, you discovered that kind you kind of, I suppose. I was always like down the shed with dad with the tools and things, but he was always into the metal work, not the woodwork. But um, I can't weld at all. <laughs> I can't even try. But I um, I loved I loved the cutting and you know the smell of the wood and joining it all together and seeing something go from a pile of sticks to like a coffee table. It's amazing. It's addictive. Incredible. Oh, you know what we would love if you could share some of that in Obsessed With, like maybe take us for a bit of a video tour of, of your workshop and show some of the things. Yeah, sure. Just think that that's absolutely amazing. It's, it's almost like it's one of those skills that's slowly dwindling away because everything's so mass produced and, and tacky and boring and dull. And when you are yeah. someone talented like you, it's like, yeah, let's share that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah no it's good because everything is either made in china or it's made out of chipboard or mdf or flat packed and i'm not a fan of putting stuff together from ikea or amart or wherever it comes from i've never enjoyed that process which is surprising considering i build furniture but <laughs> it's different you know so yeah no i think the handmade stuff's far better quality and it lasts longer and you know where it came from so yeah so and so you have another business. Now, I'm just thinking, like, when do you sleep? So you've got the cattle business, yeah. you've got the handmade furniture business, and then you've yes. got Business Quiz Boutique. So you yeah, have that's right. them in Business Grow their email list. Yes, that's right. So it's a pretty good time to be doing that right now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And it probably always was, but people aren't, weren't aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> until now when they actually need it so yeah yeah do you think you're a, a little bit complacent because facebook and instagram and linkedin are just there they're easy to use you know you've got millions of people at your fingertips so we kind of like yeah, oh, i don't really need to do that yeah that's right they do and I, I was one of them um and the reason i came about the, the quizzes is because i wanted to separate my ideal clients for my furniture because someone who likes rustic furniture is not going to be liking hamptons you know the more sophisticated type and i wanted to be able to separate separate my audience 
So when I was emailing people out, they weren't getting stuff they weren't interested in. And it took me uh, just over a year to find something that didn't look spammy on my website. <laughs> and I thought, well, if I had this problem, then I'm pretty sure other people would too. So, uh, you know, did research, we got good at it. Um, and we started that business quiz boutique because I, I needed it. So I thought other people would probably want to do that with their email list and they want to grow their list. And if you don't own social media, it's not yours. Uh, and I mean, like the reach, our furniture page, we've got, I think we've got nearly 1,300 people who follow our page. And I think about, hmm, about 100 of those people will actually interact with any one given post. Our engagement low is pretty low. So our email list opening is way higher. So it's like four times as high. So. Well, I guess it's like you say, it's easier to be um, more personalised in an email, isn't it, than just a, a blanket post across kind of hoping that you touch on things that people are interested in and you can't do that all the time. And when you build an email list, you can get very specific, can't you, about how to individualise what you send out. Yeah, that's right. You could have people down to their particular love of furniture or the age of their child or the life stage that they're going through or, you know, marriage, divorce, pregnancy, menopause. You can divide your audience so specifically so it helps you, you know, talk to those people in a way that they are needing, not just this blanket buy my stuff kind of email. So, oh, that's yeah. really cool. You're such a talented human being. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> most of us don't, do we? Like it's it's hard when some. I I I think for most women, I, I can't speak for men because I'm not a man. At least I don't think so. But I know for a lot of women, <laughs> when we get compliments, it's kind of, kind of like going, oh, okay, what do I do with that? Because we're yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, acknowledging our wins, are we? I mean, like you, if you sat down and you wrote down all of these awesome things that you do and you looked at them, I think you'd go, geez, Rosemary, she's pretty shit hot. I like her. <laughs> yeah, my husband thinks so. so. <laughs> okay. Which is good. <laughs> How long have you been married for? Uh, uh, oh, I'm just trying to think. Since 2016. So was that five years? Five years, yeah. And you've got four girls. How old are the girls? Yeah, four girls. Uh, my girls, my two big girls were from my previous marriage. Um, my two little girls are from my current marriage. I uh, don't know what that makes me, but anyway. <laughs> A mother. Um, yeah, so Lily, she is 10 shortly, and Evie is eight soon, or, or Boxing Day, she's eight. Or, um, Ali's turning three in six weeks. She's very excited about that. And Maggie is one and a quarter. So, yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Uh, we, we like she is totally normal. <laughs> do the, do the, the big girls go to school? So do they travel to school? Like when yeah, you a, school? a little school that's about 10 minutes away. Yeah, so they go to that. They're in grade two and grade four, yeah. Oh, excellent. That's so cool. So how do you maintain your sanity having four girls? I, I'm a girl and sometimes I do my own head. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not always easy. I can't say I've never yelled. Um, but we do try. <laughs> we do try our best and it is. it just gets really loud in our house. We just have come to accept that. But, you know, I, um, I heard a lady say once that... Um, the kids have behaviours, but only, but 90% of those behaviours don't count. It's just normal kid stuff. It's only the 10% that you have to actually pay attention to that needs guidance or whatever. And I try to remember that. And most days we do really well, but sometimes, you know, it's a full moon like last night, not so much. <laughs> but yeah, no, we try. That's really wise. It, it is because we there's such, such, such a spotlight on how we're meant to behave and what we're meant to say and how we're meant to dress and how we're meant to show up. And, and I guess it, it's, it becomes hard to filter out what's, what's just appropriate behaviour and what's just normal behaviour and what's behaviour that we should discourage. Um, I don't think it'd be easy being a kid these days. There's too many rules. No, no um, we were just talking about technology yesterday and, um, because Alex, my husband, is always complaining they like it too much. I'm like, well, we like technology too, but we just didn't have it when we were kids, so we didn't miss it. 
but you know, like you try to take, you know, turn the TV off, or if they sometimes they get a, an hour or so on the computer, and then when you know when the time's up, it's a big cry fest. But <laughs> but um, we never had it when we were kids, so we didn't know what we were missing. You know, the, the worst thing my parents could do would be to you know chain our bikes to the post so we couldn't use them. But you know, there was just we were off down the paddock doing stuff all the time. There was no TV was like one hour after school. Well, we ate our afternoon tea, and then we were down getting dirty. So down the paddock. <clears throat> but anyway, different world, isn't it? It's interesting to oh, totally. even out in the the bush that kids are kids. You know, they they, they love their oh, device. Yeah. It's funny you say that. I used to punish my children. I've got two boys. They're big boys now, but when they were little, like your your kids' age, I used to lock them out of the house for half an hour every day and say, go. <laughs> and that was their punishment, to be locked out oh, of the house. They'd go, to go and play. <laughs> wee mum. And I went, there's a tree over there. Just use it. Like, go get dirt. Yeah. There's a bush <laughs> Yeah, come on. Like, that's right. Mm. What's nothing wrong with that? So with, with your four girls, when you think about the world we live in and, and we don't even know what the world's going to be like in six months' time, no. what's the most important thing that we can do for our kids right now? Um, I think being honest and real is really big and um, helping them develop their resilience and grit because I don't know about your kids, but mine don't have much of that at the moment. <laughs> and they're going to need it when they're older if they want to do anything that's you know significant like even if you go to uni like it takes three or four years to get a uni degree so that takes commitment and grit and discipline and they can't just oh the first exam oh, I was too hard I'll give up and like they I don't mind her only little at the moment but I see it with my eldest as soon as something gets a bit tough she's just oh I didn't, I didn't really like that anyway I won't do it now it's like well it's just because it's hard doesn't mean you don't do it. It just means that when you're finished, you're going to be that much more capable than when you started. And they don't really see it. And I guess that's the beauty of being an adult. We can see that all these things that they're learning is going to serve them in the future, even though it takes a little while to get through the process. But, yeah, no, resilience and grit would be a big one, in my opinion. Mm, well, I think there's some adults that probably could take something out of that as well. <laughs> yeah. So when you think about what is important to you, what's your why? What lights you up? What gets you excited? I mean, you've got all of these things that are happening in your life. You're a really busy human being. But why do you do what you do? Why do you make furniture? Why do you help women in business? You know, why do you, you know, why do you work so hard on the land to feed all of us? folks back in the city <laughs> yeah well I guess um there's kind of three things that get me out of bed one would be my one-year-old daughter but um um in all seriousness I'm a big fan of independence for women and I was kind of brought up in the you um you go to school you get a job and when you get married you just stay home and have kids and your husband brings in the money and that was all right until it wasn't all right anymore. And then what do you do? You've got no money, you've got no qualifications. So I think you need to have independence throughout your entire life, not just for that little tiny bit before you have kids. Because kids are huge. They completely change the way you live as a person. And I mean, it's not easy just to go back to a full-time job. And those people who would do it are better than me because I couldn't do it. <laughs> But um, yeah, independence financially, especially, is so huge. And um, I just didn't want um, my life to be um, the headline would read, Your life brought to you by your husband. You know, like I would like to have <laughs> my own independence and my own financial goals and stuff like that. So, God forbid, I do end up by myself, um, that that part of my life will be fine. So, and I've seen it with so many, I mean, I'm 30, 39 this year. And I've seen a lot of my friends get divorced and because they were, and I was divorced too, but um, because they were at home looking after the kids, um, now their biggest asset is the ability to iron and it just breaks my heart. Like they haven't got the education or whatever. And we're in, we live in a small town, so, you know, not everyone goes off and does the uni thing or 
has a trade because that was you know what the boys did but um yeah independence financially is so huge and some of us have had to learn the hard way <laughs> how um, bad that can actually get um but yeah so and the second thing would be that my brain just never shuts up so if i don't do something about it then it's just going to haunt me for all night and all day so i am better off just going and doing these things that pop in my head yeah and the third thing is that i really like to um i really like relationships with other women and i love having the conversations and the chat so i get so excited about being able to um i don't know contribute to their success in some kind of tiny way even if it's like an email or you know a service or just a chat or a shoulder yeah so that's me in a nutshell <laughs> oh well i think that's a pretty cool nutshell thank you that's amazing <laughs> Rose, yeah. thank you so much for joining me this morning. I just think you're absolutely amazing. Um, I don't think you even realise how amazing you are. And I'm so glad that we're able to share you with our crew at Obsessed With because I think there was so much golden wisdom in what you just said then that um, yeah. I, I reckon people should like. I'm going to warn them to take notes. <laughs> thank you. So, well, hopefully I can help somebody. Well, I, I think that you probably don't even realise how many people you do help. Just one last thing before we go. What's the next big thing for you? What do you have coming up that's got you excited? Ah, well, I was working on it yesterday, actually. Um, we're in the process of getting our furniture organised to be able to be shipped Australia-wide. So that's pretty um, cool for us because we live in a real small town. So... Um, and we do deliveries all around central Queensland in our own truck, but we're hoping that we can get um, our furniture to get into the bigger cities and stuff like that. And we've only got one collection that's um, ready to go at the moment. But yeah, so we're gonna be Australia-wide for our furniture in the near future, which is really, really cool. That is so exciting, so cool. I know. <laughs> and yeah, in obsessed with um, you know, photos or videos of furniture or you in action because we'd love to see you in action. I think more women yeah, probably need to pick up those tools and, and get back to some of the, you know, the, these really simple, I'm seeing a lot of people going back to really simple things to get enjoyment and to fulfil themselves. So yeah, right. thank you for joining me and we'll see you around. Okay, thank you.